Hey everybody! It's a beautiful summer day here in the Pacific Northwest and I'm really excited to try catching some crayfish. I haven't been out yet this summer, but I'm really optimistic about how we're going to do today. Before I get started though, I wanted to address one of the questions I often get from my videos, which is, where'd you get those traps? So we'll take a moment to talk about the traps I use. I've also got a brand new one here I'm really excited to try. We'll go through that and then let's get some traps in the water and see if we can catch some crayfish today. Okay, so before I describe these traps, I wanted to quickly mention that I don't have any kind of financial interest with either of these suppliers. Um, I just happen to know these are two makers of really high quality traps. There may be others out there. If there's some I'm missing, by all means, please do let me know. But these are the two I wanted to talk about. First of all, the Trapper Arnie traps. These are made in Sweden. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that these are the ones I always use. Um, I've had great luck with them. They're really robust. Um, they're really lightweight, and yeah, I've been using them for years with, with a lot of success. On the right, I have one that's new to me. I'm really excited about this trap. This is from Craster. Um, right there, you can see it says Made in USA, which I think is awesome. Those of you that know me know I love to support U.S. manufacturing and buy high-quality U.S. gear if I can. The engineering that went into this thing is just amazing. I had the chance to sit down with Mike for a couple minutes um, at a Craster event not too long ago, and hear a little bit about how this was engineered. It's incredible, all the way down to the paint color. Um, they specifically chose this color of paint so that it would blend in really well with the bottom. Um, sometimes bright colors like that can scare away the really big mature crayfish and they'll come right into this trap. So I'm really excited to try this today. To be fair, it's probably meant more to be used from a boat. Uh, Crayster also makes cylinder traps like this, but this is the one I have, so we'll give it a shot. Um, are you gonna pay more for these kinds of traps? Yes. Is it worth it? Well, of course that's up to you, but to me, I, I think absolutely yes. I just, I love to buy high quality gear if I can. If you take care of these traps, they'll last you a lifetime. You get a lot of enjoyment out of them. If it's not in your budget, that's totally fine. Um, you can catch crayfish for little to nothing if you're just starting out and if you want to, you know, get a feel for whether or not you like it. Um, but once you're ready to invest in some good traps, I would recommend um, going for either of these options. So we'll give this a try. I will put links in the video description for both suppliers in case you're interested in ordering some of your own. But yeah, that's enough talk for me. Let's get some traps in the water and see how we do. Well, that's great, but I think it's upside down. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, nope. Maybe I try to throw it upside down and land right side up. Oh. Well, throwing this craster trap a long ways wasn't working for me. <laughs> it kept turning upside down. So this spot may not be quite as good, but I'm going to put it in right here where I can reach a little better. Like I said, this trap really is meant to be used from a boat, but we'll try it here, see how it goes. Cool. Let's try that. I don't know if you can see them through the camera, but there's a nice sized male crayfish. Invasive species here, red swamp crayfish, so really don't feel bad about taking as many as I can. Well, speaking of invasives, those of you that are from the Pacific Northwest, or at least my area here in Oregon, might recognize this. It's Himalayan blackberry. And it's really thorny. The pond is right on the other side. There's a place I'd like to put a trap, but nah, forget it. I'm not trying to walk through this. All right, that was the last trap. We'll see. Normally I'd only leave these in for maybe an hour to an hour and a half if things are really going well, but I'm not seeing a lot of activity, so we'll let the trap soak a little bit longer, maybe give them a good couple hours. So a couple more thoughts before we pull these traps. First of all, it's always good to make sure that there are some crayfish and that they're active before you throw out all your traps. It's really frustrating if you put out like six or eight or even 10 traps and then you find out that the crayfish just aren't active and you're not getting anything. You've just wasted all that time and all that bait. So I always like to at least see if I can see some crayfish in the water. Or if not, at least just throw out one trap and give it a few minutes and see if I get some. Then you know you're at least going to get, you know, something. 
The other thought I have is don't get discouraged. I've had sometimes people, you know, reply to videos or send me emails and say, gosh, I went out and really wasn't very good. I got no crayfish or I only got a couple. But sometimes this will be in like June and things just aren't that active yet. So, you know, if you're at a good spot but nothing's really happening, give it a while. You know, wait a couple weeks, come back. This spot today, I'm not anticipating a whole lot, actually. I think it's just still a little bit too early. Right now it's early July. But in a month or a month and a half, this should be great. So we'll see. But yeah, don't get discouraged. Okay, let's pull some traps. Did we get anything in there yep, at all? That looks like we got crayfish. Ooh, there's one on top. Oh, one on the outside. He'll probably fall off. Okay, keep going. Let's lift it on up. And... Okay, that guy lost two weight in it. Oh, not many. Just one. Maybe two, three. Just a couple. Ooh, yeah. Two or three. I think I see at least a couple in there. Oh, one fell off. Maybe I spoke too soon. Yeah, not great. <laughs> one, two, three. Nope, make that two. And then two more little guys way in the corner. There's a trap sitting in this shallow spot. Well, you never know, there might be a couple in there. Put this one up, there we go. See anything? Some really little ones, but a couple of decent sized ones. <laughs> These traps filter for you. The little ones fit right through the holes, you don't have to deal with sorting them out by hand. Well, alright, not doing great, but at least we're seeing some. Not skunked. A couple on the outside I see fell off. That means there's some on the inside. A little better. Another pretty shallow one. There's a couple. Let's see. Might be our best trap yet. Cool. Should be a trap out there somewhere. A little deeper. There it is. What have we got? About three, maybe? <laughs> Little guy. There might be one or two keepers in there. Not too great. It's weird. We're only a few feet from that other trap. All right. A couple more traps to go. Another one that was sitting pretty shallow. Well, I see a couple in there, I think. Not usually a good spot. Handful. That's getting better. That one's got some size to him. All right, good. And here's the new trap. My apologies to Craster. I just couldn't get this put in a good spot, so I think if there's anything at all in this trap, we'll consider it a victory. Um, really meant to be used from a boat, but let's take a look. Hey, there is something in there. Whoa! There's a bunch of crayfish in there. Oh my goodness, I've never seen one that big. Look at the size of this guy. I have never seen a crayfish that big out here. I'll take them out later and give you guys a look, but wow, that's incredible. And this was not in a good spot. And it wasn't using very good bait. I know, I know. You guys give me a hard time every time I open up a tin of cat food, but wow, look at that guy. Look at the size of this crayfish. <laughs> I mean, He's gigantic. I have caught hundreds of red swamp crayfish out here, probably thousands, and I've never seen one this big. And here's our last one. A lot of these traps were sitting really shallow. Doesn't seem to have hurt much. We have a couple. Yes, we do. Well, that's not bad at all. Look at that, that's I think our biggest quantity. Not biggest size, but that's great. Okay, so I've got all my gear packed up, just about ready to hit the road. Before I go, one last tip, always count your traps before you leave. I know a guy <laughs> who, believe it or not, has left traps behind. And it seems implausible but when you're dealing with several traps, you're tired at the end of the day, you're in a hurry to get home, you can forget a trap. And it's no fun, trust me. So 
Always do a final count, make sure you have all the traps you came with, especially if you have more than a couple in the water. So as far as the traps themselves, I still love my Trapper Arnie Trappy brand traps made in Sweden on the left. Those things are great, lightweight, easy to carry, really robust. I've caught thousands of crayfish with them, both our native signal crayfish and the invasive red swamp crayfish like we were catching today. Having said that, I was really impressed with this crayster trap. Um, I don't think that style is even really meant to be thrown from shore. Crayster also makes the cylindrical ones, and I think that would work a lot better for what I'm doing. But Mike, the designer of that trap, I might have mentioned this before, but when he talked to me about it, he said he was really frustrated with other traps that the big crayfish were just hesitant to go in. And so they put a lot of effort into making this trap so that uh, you could catch big crayfish. And it just seems like it can't be a coincidence that my first time trying it today, it produced the biggest red swamp crayfish I've ever caught out here. So that really bodes well for this trap. It's cool. I can't wait to try it on some native signal crayfish. And I would love to try one of their, I think they're called snake river traps. They're cylinder traps. That'd be really cool too. But so far, I really don't think you could go wrong with either one. All right, so here I am back home with the final count. Just took these guys out of the steamer, ended up with 65 red swamp crayfish, which really isn't bad. In fact, we had a couple of really nice big ones. There's this one, and then this one that came out of that crayster trap. Look at the size of this guy. Just huge, at least by my standards for red swamp crayfish. Anyway, it was a great day out there. It's only gonna get better as the days get hotter and hotter and the water gets lower and clearer. So I'm looking forward to that. But I really appreciate you joining me today. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, anything, I'm always happy to hear it. I love reading comments from all of you. And if you just wanna drop a comment and say, hey Michael, how's it going? That's fine too. Either way, like I said, I'd love to hear from you. All right, take care. I'll see you next time.